Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Today I will show you my process and how I create my cinematic shots, how I create them, how I name them and how I export them. Starting from how I create them, when I have a project, it doesn't matter if this project is work in progress or not. I go here and I create a level sequence with shots. I do this because once I create it once, first it will allow me to set up my cinematic cameras and instead of having them here, Second, I will animate all these cameras. So usually when I start a new project, I establish all my shots as early as possible. So to create your cinematic shots, click here, add level sequence with shots, then you will give this a name. This name will be the name of the master sequence. So here, for example, I have, not in this project, wait a second. So I wanted to say that I have the folder cinematics. I just opened here and let me show you something. So I migrated from old project to new project to reduce the size and to clean it up a little. Let's do another quick tutorial. I will click here, right click show in Explorer so I can just see this uh, content folder here. In most cases, when you migrate from a project to project, it will not copy these. It will not migrate the cinematics for you. So don't be surprised. And especially it will not copy the presets that we will talk about in a little bit. So I'm going to copy this folder to my content folder in my new project and it will appear here, cinematics. Under sequences, we will have a new folder called Maple 18. And this is the name of the sequence. Sequence, we can give this any name we want. And for the root is for the suffix. So here is the root. Then you can select the path, it's under sequences, that's the default, and then you can set the number of the shots. Usually I set this to a higher number, 10, 20, depends. And then I animate these shots, I like duplicate what I like because I set up the camera the way I want or something. Let's talk about it. The sequence to duplicate. Let's say if you have a sequence with a special camera with different aspect ratio or anything, you can select that camera from here and if you have something like this, like the lighting, where you control the lighting of the project inside the level, the sequencer, so you can select this sequence or any sequence you like, make it a duplicate. So that's really great. Let's say you don't have a duplicate, you want to create a sequence before you create your many shots. You can right click in the content browser anywhere and go to cinematics and create a level sequence. Of course, Pardon me when I said anywhere, make a new folder for it, call it templates, for example. Here you can create your level sequence. And if you want to find this real quick, you can, when you right click, you can just type level sequence and click and name it. So this, for example, it can be a camera setting, it can be lighting, it can be anything. And going back here, you can set the duration and you can set the names of the shots. So you can experiment with this, but I usually keep it as it is. I usually increase this to like seven seconds. It's the default for any shot I want to create. After I create my shots, it will create for you a folder. Let's actually create a new one just for you. Just for you. Click hell yeah. Actually wait, just for you. Sorry, I'm doing this. There we go. Now we have under sequences, a new folder with our, our sequences here. All these shots you are now in the master sequence when you click on just for you you will see the master sequence and inside that you will see the shots and then you will see shot one shot two three four five and so on this is why you need to create more than five shots now if you go to the first shot and click on it it will be from the view you were at at the last time you can click on the camera icon here and fly to wherever you like to fly find the camera angle you like. So let's say this is a nice one. Then you want to go to transform for this camera. You want to click on the arrow here to expand it. And then you want to set keyframes for location and rotation. Now you need to set them both because if you click on one of them, it will reset the other. It's preferred to click here and then delete the scale or leave it. Now let's find another angle we like. Let's say this angle and you can now click here. You see, I told you. so. Press Ctrl Z, find another angle, and then click on transform, then we can delete this. Now, I can click and extract this here, or sorry, expand it here. And the reason I didn't go with the playhead all the way during to, to here, it's because if you are in the master sequence, which is this guy, and you double click here, it will open that sequence for you. In the playhead, it will show the camera for you, but if you go outside, it will like cut it. and that's important because if you want to animate the camera, you want to select the camera and 
animate from here, not from here. From here, it may not work. You see, I'm locked now. So just pay attention to this when you are inside the, the actor. So the best way to animate this, if you simply click on that find icon and animate the actual shot like this, it will open it just for you here and you can do your work. So let's expand this here. Here you can simply click 150. And now if you click and press on space, you will see your animation. And the animation now is like the interpolation between the keyframes is set to automatic. And you can tell by looking at this red circle here. If you right click, you will see key interpolation. We have cubic, this is kind of new, smart auto, then auto, user, break, linear, constant. Preferably you want to choose linear. And look at this, one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to press four. So I'm going to click and drag and press four. And now it changed all the keyframes to linear. Press space and now it's moving in a constant speed. Now, when you are animating cinematic shots, you want to switch from the viewport type, from the default viewport to the cinematic viewport. Click here and notice now we have some controls. We have controls to play, to reverse, you can animate things more than cameras. So if you have lights and speaking of lights, do you remember that light thing earlier? I think it was somewhere here. Let's just search for light. Yeah, I will go to my sequence. First, the easiest way to add anything to the sequencer, especially in our case, it's another sequencer, click and drag, okay? And now this animation will play. So if we go to the animation here, play it. That's amazing what you can do. The other way you can click here on track, you can add actors to sequencers. So these actors must be inside your level. You can add them from here. We can dive much deeper into anything you want in this tutorial. So if you have any questions, anything you want to learn about the sequencer, just let me know. I'm doing my best to make this as fast as possible and it's been 12 minutes already. Thank you again. And if you enjoy this, of course, please share it with your friends or leave a like. If you don't enjoy it, dislike. Double dislike, actually. Okay, now let's delete this and let's go back to the old lighting. So I'm going to enable this again. And why did, did we delete it? Let's just bring it back. It's okay, it was nice. But let's bring back the old lighting. Awesome. Okay, so if you save this, I'm gonna save it, let's say. I don't want to save it, but if you save it, uh, you can duplicate it. And then you can open the shot, the camera here, and then go to here, delete this keyframes, and then select the, these two keyframes. And now you can go to any shot you like, but let's say this is a pl nice place. Now. If you want, sometimes don't don't want to write. You can you know you can type in multiple places. So you can extend it the end from here, or you can type it from here. You can move to a new place, and then you can go and click here. But I don't like that. So I have this enabled. Create auto keyframe, or basically this is what it says. I don't know. We should definitely have a shorter name for this. But what this is, it will create a keyframe when you animate your camera or change an object, it will detect when a value changes and animate it for you. So now I will enable this and I will just do anything like this. As long as I have keyframes, it should work. But now it did not work. Do you know why? It's because I'm flying in my 3D viewport. I'm not flying inside the camera. So I'm gonna click on the camera and now I am locked inside the camera. And this is the active actor now. And once I release my mouse, it will create these keyframes for me. Let's say I don't like this shot. I'd like to move, place it here. It will simply override the keyframes and do the transition for me. I would save this. In this case, I don't want, but usually would and so on. After you create as many shots as you want, and I prefer you create so many shots, the more shots you create with different lenses, different lighting, different scenarios, the better for your project, because it takes so much time to produce these Unreal Engine projects, and you must get creative in how many shots and how many ways you can show these projects you're creating. You press Ctrl space, and you want to render the shot. So you click here, render this video to a movie or image from frame sequence, and it will open the movie render queue for you, but if you don't have the movie render queue or for any reason, like usually the best practice is if you go to cinematics and open the movie render queue from here. And if you don't have this guy, you go to edit. So go to edit plugins, type movie render, and you can also enable movie render queue additional render passes that we can discuss in another lesson. Now that is just more than enough. Restart your engine. Since you're here, you can hit render. Yes? No. 
you need to set the settings. So you can start with the settings here. You have unsaved configuration, and that's where I said earlier you can have your presets. But now I will keep things simple. So click here, and what you see is a dialog with the options for the rendering options and the export. So you can add EXR, PNG. As for the rendering, you have things like the lighting only, reflections only. The path tracer is from here. So if you want to have a path trace scene, you would do that from here. In addition to exports and rendering, we have the settings. And these are the most important guys when it comes to the settings because they are the settings. So click on anti-aliasing. Usually you would go raise this to eight, like this is Perfect for semi-final result, but let's say now for a draft render, for test render, you definitely don't want that. You don't want anything render like this. But in the output, you want to give your files a name. And in this case, it will be saved in the project directory under saved in a folder called movie renders. And we always need to change this. It's a best practice because you always want to retrieve your shots or replace them or update them. In the file name output, it will call it the sequence name and then the frame number. Click accept and let's just hit render for anything. Let's just see. It's worth noting that if you are rendering for the first time, your engine is going to compile shaders. It's doing that on the other screen for me. All right, and that's great. So let's check it out. Click on the output here. It will open the folder for you. And here you have an image sequence. And if you wonder how would you import this image sequence, DaVinci Resolve is definitely the best tool I would recommend for everyone. It's also free. And I'm thinking about getting the paid version, the studio version. So in the comments, if you use the studio versions, would you let me know? And what are the cool features about the studio? So now I will create a new project, but instead of creating a new project, I will just simply open my this guy project. It looks like I need to relocate some media, but that's okay because this is going to be based on the names easy, which is something we're going to discuss in a moment. Now, you can import your shots in multiple ways. You can go to a media folder and if you have a folder with as many shots, so let me show you something. So I usually create folders with underscore like renders or CGI renderings to differentiate my shots. It's important to organize these. It's not only used for the cinematic, put the music and then export them the final cinematic, then delete everything. It's really important when you want to import or work on a project like this to have your shots organized and retrievable in future. Now, from here, I can simply play the cinematic shot we rendered and Lumen will do some funny stuff. It will always happen. Occlusion color as well as you may have noticed here. This will always happen. So you need to set your shots in a way that it loads the project before it like do some massive turn or whatever. We will discuss optimizations in future. You can right click and add to media pool. I will simply right click here, create a folder, call it something important and then simply click and drag. And I would right click create a timeline, create, click on that timeline. So now I am in the timeline view. I recommend doing the following. So under here, look at this. I have row work in progress and I have based on the dates, these shots here that are not being found, which is very nice. Let me relocate them. So I'm gonna click here and locate. And I know that I moved them here. So wait, here. There we go. I would go back here to this view because it's easy to view this way. And then I can see the progress if I want, or I can look at shots that needs to be rendered to fix them. And I usually start like with the project name like this. It depends, but notice the main difference here between like naming the project here and there is a way I can improve on this and naming the project usually as it is. It's called shot01. This is a default name you export from all your Unreal Engine projects. So the minimum you can do is a couple of things. Inside Unreal Engine, you can go to the user configurations and here you can see between the format strings. So if you copy these or if you put them like this, so here you can put format strings and then inside that you can put these options. And these options are also kind of explained here or you can see what they does and you can put them in the put directory or the file name. So sometimes I put the map name 
I put the name of the project, I put the date of the shot, that's usually very important if I'm working like, yeah, it's just important. I put the date of the shot and other things. So that will make your shots easily locatable, findable in future. So let's open that in the correct location. Here I have set by date, name of the project, and when I open this shot, I can see some information about it. Now, what I also recommend, so later you would have many shots, shots for the interior, shots for the exterior, and so on. You can simply, to make things easy for you, you can select the shot, and let's say shot 04, and then call it underscore. Instead of 02, call it office. Any code name you want to give it. And you can call it, for example, 50 millimeter. You can call it whatever you want in the shot exact, and then you would keep these organized based on their folder. Give this folder also a name, like you can call this, for example, the office. This is the living room, this is the kitchen. And just keep the number because numbers are good. Before we finish this, I just want to talk about one final thing. I was remembering if I forgot something. Just one final thing, guys. Move it in the queue. These settings, it's very preferred that you save them later when you add more to them. So I prefer to keep them always next to cinematics. So here under cinematics, I have presets in this folder. Sequences, then presets. And here I have three presets in this current project. And I can simply click here, click on the preset I want, and it will put it 4K, it will put the settings I want, it will put the console variables I want, it will put anything and so on. That's very important. Now, if I want to add multiple other shots, it will assign them for me automatically. This is extremely important for don't add all your shots like this and then change them. Now, notice, I'm going to change this to something else. It will not be possible to change all these at once. It's just not possible, one by one. So the best way is to change them to an option and then click and drag like this. And then happy rendering like your boy William Fauché says and stay hydrated like I usually say. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>